Hi, I'm Shiv Ghani. Thanks for checking out the Raised Line interview series in which me and my co-hosts, Dr. Rishi Desai and registered nurse Jana Emil, explore how to strengthen our healthcare system with some amazing leaders in medicine, technology, education, and government. And they have some great advice for people starting careers in healthcare as well. I hope you will watch these highlights and then go listen to the full podcast interview wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Risha Desai. Today on Raise the Line, I'm happy to be joined by Varsha Rao, CEO of Nurex, a telemedicine provider that offers a hassle-free way to access healthcare and medication. Prior to Nurex, Varsha served as COO of Clover Health, where she brought, brought operational leadership to the health insurance startup. She also served as Airbnb's head of global operations, managing the company's market expansion and host growth around the world as revenue grew from $200 million to $2 billion. I'd also like to thank our recent Raise the Line guest, Chelsea Clinton, for the introduction to Varsha. Thanks so much for being with us today. It's great to be here. Thank you. You've been involved in so many important businesses and well-known businesses. What got you interested in healthcare specifically? I think for me, I have mo- I spent I spent most of my early career in um, consumer tech, or most of my career in consumer tech over twenty years, and I always really enjoyed the ability to work with and impact um, people directly. All of it was con- direct to consumer. But I think after um, spending uh, several years at Airbnb and really being in a very mission driven company that was all around, you know connecting the world and connecting cultures through travel. It really, um, after I took a break from Airbnb, I felt, well, I really wanted to do something as meaningful, if not more. And to me, that is exactly what healthcare is. There are so many challenges that uh, still exist, so much around access that has not been solved. And so that's where I felt that I could, that would be really passionate for me. What advice do you have for folks that are just starting out? I'd love to hear you um, speak on that. One, I would say if, if you are a clinician and are in the early stages of your career, I think there's huge need for folks like yourselves for technologists to come up with something innovative. I guess the second thing I would say is like, learn all the technologies that are out there, right? Because I think um, the idea that things have to be a certain way, I think is, that is the basis for where, you know, you can, if you, if you keep doing it that way, you'll see, there'll be no innovation, right? So um, I like people to, and I, I guess the way we end up coming up with our innovations is to say like, what's the essence of what something, what you were trying to get at? and how it used to be done, you know, what were you trying to understand? And then is there a new way to understand that, that reduces the friction that couldn't have been done 10 years, 15 years ago, because that technology didn't exist, but what now exists? And can you, you know, again, what's reduce the friction, increase access, reduce the cost, all of the above. Um, So where the intention gets preserved, the quality can get preserved, but you can do it in a more seamless way. And I think I think clinicians, truthfully, are at the heart of this because they really understand those intentions. Um, we can't, we never innovate without our clinician partners like side by side. Um, but then that's when we get the best innovation is when we all come together. Thanks for watching this preview of Raise the Line. To hear the full interview, check out all of our podcasts and subscribe to the series. Please go to osmosis.org forward slash Raise the Line podcast or listen wherever you get your podcasts.